Hi guys, Marcus here, Everything Tenere. Today is the day. I just received the Rally Raid Open Cartridge Kit. So we're gonna look at what comes in the box, what extras I ordered, and how you install it in your OEM fork. So you get two cartridges of course. Looks really nice. Uh, one is a compression cartridge and one is a rebound doesn't matter which side you put this on on the bike but they say put the compression one on the left side or on the left leg uh, you get two springs and you have to select what rate depending on your weight you get a liter of uh, fork oil you got a bag of tools one for removing the cap and one adjusting the sag and some stickers. I also ordered the piston removal tool so this one reaches down the the tube of the fork so you can uh, help out when removing the piston because if you remove the bottom screw the the rebound valve the whole piston can turn around in the fork leg and you will not be able to remove the bolt uh, so to say. Uh, with this one you can actually insert it and it has some teeth and you can uh, hold this one so you can remove the bolt. I also opted to get fresh seals so some SKF oil seals and we will look at that as well because they look a bit different than the OEM seals. Um, with the fork as well you get three uh, preload spacers so you have 11 millimeters of preload uh, in the cap itself and then you can add these depending on uh, your sag if you need to adjust the sag uh, to your liking so I will opt out to have any of these washers in uh, and just try it out first with the preload I can adjust you have one more little uh, washer or spacer down here this is just a seat for for the spring so this one you should not remove and you can see you cannot remove it uh, without removing uh, this spring guide here so this one should still be there what else nothing more so I will probably refer to my other video about uh, fork servicing as well uh, because when installing this kit Rally Raid have some great instructions and I'll put the link to the PDF in the description below it's really easy to follow and uh, this video just shows you how to do it. Now I already removed my fork uh, or my, my both the fork legs and I all removed the internals as well. I just have one thing that I need to remove. So I will start with that. Stay tuned. So the easiest way to remove the piston, as I said before, it's a 14 millimeter hex. The problem is that the piston itself can turn around inside the leg, uh, so using a normal wrench might just not do it, so to say. So an impact impact gun helps a lot. Same when you attach the, the cartridge kit new bolt. You first hand tighten it and then you assemble everything and when tightening it to the correct specs it might just turn the piston inside and you will not be able to fasten it to the specs so an impact gun it's a good thing to have there we go it's loose and <coughs> when you then remove this one you have an o-ring so the bolt itself might not want to come out I used a PVC pipe and just pushed it out from, from inside the tube so it came out fully. So you might need to do that. So I'll remove the piston now and you can see how it looks like. So even if I got it loose it will still turn so I used the special tool that I insert and I can lock the the piston in place and actually get it out it's a bit tough so I will use the wrench again I will just keep 
There we go. So now it's, it's out. There we go. And it will be some oil in here, so make sure that you can uh, empty that out somewhere. So this is the OEM piston and I had a lot of guck there. It's pretty, pretty small compared to the cartridge kit. So <clears throat> here you see my leg, the piston is removed. I'm putting it all together with the seals, the new seals. If you use the SKF seal kit, you have the dust seal, you have the oil seal, and you have a spacer. So if you use this kit, you're supposed to use the spacer so that the, the seal doesn't move up and down in its seat in, its, in the fork. So make sure you use the, the spacer and uh, make sure that the clip get clipped in in its screw when you put the leg together so remember first the the dust cap the clip the seal with the spring that is visible towards the dust cap the little plastic spacer the metal uh, washer with the flat surface towards the seal the outer bushing and the inner bushing on its uh, place here and then we drive it all together with a fork seal driver as you see in my other video so now we have the leg put together with the new components the new skf seal everything perfectly uh, we cleaned out all the surfaces uh, where the old uh, rebound valve was and now we're going to insert the cartridge together with the with the cap or screw it with the cap no spring because now we're going to refill oil so we start off by removing the the bolt here in the bottom because we refill or we fill the cartridge from the bottom so to say so we remove the bolt, we insert the cartridge and hand tighten the, the cap. You have a special spanner for this. There we go so I already done the compression leg so this is the rebound leg so now I will uh, put this in the vise upside down like that And I will actually move it a bit because it's easier if I can uh, if I can move the everything up and down when I refill. I will actually put it on the other side. I think there we go. And I will show you guys the most important thing when you do this, when you fill it up, is that, let's see if I can get this 
moving along it's pretty hard to see but when you fill up the oil you need to push the leg all the way up so you fill the inside of the piston and not the outside and we want to work this up and down until no air bubbles comes out so I uh, measure up 450 milliliters of oil in my little cup here so when doing the the compression leg I actually had to remove some when doing the air gap so around 410 420 milliliters was was the full amount of oil that I had in the leg so so I will start doing this and remember you need to fill it inside the piston so when you fill the oil you need to hold this one the leg up so you can pour in the oil into the piston until the lowest parts of the thread when you reach that part you drop the leg down a bit like 10 centimeters and work it up and down you can move it a little bit further and you can hear the gurgle and now air coming out and I do this until all the air is out and it takes a like 10 minutes filling all the oil into the leg so be patient and move it up and down and then we come to the next step which would be to put the bolt in and then turn the leg the other way around remove the cap and uh, fill from there if you need or remove oil with the air gap tool so we will come to that soon I forgot to mention when you push it up you fill oil and then put your hand over here so you will create a vacuum and then pump the fork up and down this will move all the oil around inside the piston and it, it, it goes much quicker so the compression leg is easier than the rebound leg uh, so remember that but put your hand over so you create a vacuum and move your your fork leg like a 10 centimeters or so back and forward shake your level no air bubbles coming out fill in and if you can't get everything in that's okay you should not overfill here and then we fill the rest when we turn it around and then remove the amount of uh, oil that's needed to get the correct air gap so see you soon so now I've filled in all the all the oil that I you know 450 milliliters then you take your bolt you grease the o-ring with lithium grease and put some loctite on the bolt head install it or screw it in and hand tighten it and uh, this is now a different not a hex but uh, 17 millimeter normal wrench you get the point you just tighten this down So I turn the leg around, we, it's a bit high up now but that doesn't matter, we're not going to take out anything. So, there we go, we need to remove the top, the cap, so the 17th 17th wrench 
and my cap too. So it's not tight there because I just hand tighten it. We move the piston up and down a bit and because this is rebound it's really hard to pull it out and it should be like that and easy to push in. So this will move any remaining air bubbles out of the system. So now I need to set the air gap. When doing that the outer golden tube needs to be in level with with the inner one, not that I think it's super super important. So I have my air gap tool set to 120 millimeters. I insert this into the leg and I pull the, the syringe and hopefully we will get some oil out. Not, I think I need to. This one is a bit leaky. Apparently, no oil coming out. The piston wasn't all the way down, that's why I didn't get any oil out. So I got a little out now, which I will just return to my bottle. And I will do it again to make sure that I don't have any too much oil in. There we go. Now the leg is filled with the correct amount. Make sure that the piston uh, nut is all the way down. It can be. Do not use pliers or anything. Just put your finger here and then see so it, the, the spring guide is, is pushed all the way down that it's supposed to. Next step is to insert the spring. So we will do that and I will do that on the floor because it's a bit tricky but there are some nice sheet sheets to use to to manage to do that so so we put on the floor on the floor we pull the piston out we drop the spring on and we take something that fits into a hole in the spring guide. You can drop everything down and then we just uh, work our way upwards, so to say. We use the coil of the spring to to work the piston up so we can attach the cap it was actually harder on the OEM uh, piston so now it's on the top make sure that the caps are set to minimal rebound or compression depending on which leg you're working on if you want to have a preload spacer in you put these in now as well I'm not going to use the preload spacer at this moment of time. Uh, can remove that one. So it's on. We take our 17 millimeter spanner. Find a suitable place. There we go. And then I hand tight everything. There we go. Now we can pull up the outer tube and we can screw in the, the cap. Hand tight now as well. It's not harder than that. When we've done that, 
we want to make sure that we dry out the leg itself so for compression it's a bit easier as as it's you know we're using the valve when we push the leg down rebound it's the other way around so now it will only be the spring and you can see that I can push it down and it goes up slower so that's the rebound then we can change the the rebound setting and I think it was four from min uh, from minimal so fully counterclockwise and then four clicks in so I'll do that and then I'll uh, go to the next step so now I just need to torque this bolt to specs and it's 40 Newton meter and uh, you will feel if it's just turning around in here there we go I did not need to use the impact driver to tighten this one on the other leg I need to use the impact uh, driver to get it so that it's tight in there so the leg is done everything should be hunky dory you install this back on your bike you clamp it in the bottom clamp then tighten the top cap a bit more then uh, you uh, go for a little test ride and let it settle in and then check your sag and so on and adjust the sag you might need to put in more spacers then you do that and uh, adjust to your liking so that's it folks cartridge kit installed I forgot to uh, make a little finishing statement to the video and uh, it's just to make you aware or make sure that you read the rally raid instructions how to install the kit uh, read it twice three, three times four times go through it step by step check my other uh, fork servicing video so you know more how to remove and install uh, the fork seals and shims and everything make sure that if you use the SKF uh, oil seal kit that you use the spacer so the oil seal sits flush and solid in its seating position in the leg and cannot move back and forward when the clip has been uh, inserted 450 milliliters of oil approximately 12 centimeters air gap uh, check in the description below we have the links to my previous video and also to rattle rates PDFs otherwise I don't think it's that much yeah use your hand as a vacuum seal when you are bleeding uh, the the fork when you're filling up it with all oil it's so much easier it's much quicker uh, otherwise it's that's it I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something uh, I did learn something I never done this before and uh, yeah take care stay safe and don't do anything stupid all right cheerios bye bye